Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Let me just welcome you to our What's Next International Student Webinar. And um, hope that you're all doing well. All right, so I'm sure you can hear me. I see Richard responding, so that's great. All right, so we're going to share some bits with you this morning. It's probably evening where you are. And um, so we're going to go right into this webinar this morning. And before we go any further, I just want to introduce myself. So my name is Mario Parchment. I'm one of the enrollment advisors in marketing and enrollment services. My information is right there, so you can capture that. You probably have already been communicating with me. Now, just for land acknowledgement, recognizing that Berman University acknowledges that we are located on 36 territory, which is a traditional and ancestral territory of Creed and Blackfoot, Saltu and Nakota Sioux. We acknowledge that this territory is home to Métis settlements and the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 2, 3, and 4 within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. We make acknowledgement as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territory we reside in or are visiting. Berman University is committed to doing its part to address the legacy of broken promises and to rebuild productive partnership relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples in central Alberta and across Canada. So we just want to ensure that we made that acknowledgement before we go any further. So we're gonna look at a few things today in this webinar. We're gonna look at the new government regulations. We're gonna look at student permit. We're gonna look at other steps, financial obligation and clearance, ready to get to Canada at the port of entry. What are the expectations there? And of course, expectations when you get to Canada and also banking options and of course, if you have questions, we're going to take your questions and provide you with answer. I have with me in this webinar two very resourceful individuals. I'll introduce them later on as we go a little further, but just providing a bit of overview for some of the things that we're going to look at today. First of all, congratulations. You've been accepted to Berman University. And of course, we're delighted to have you showing interest in our university and of course getting to the point where you're now accepted as a student and ready to make a transition to be on our campus. It's something that excites us. It's something that we're delighted about and we just can't wait to get you here at Berman University. But of course, there are a few things that needs to happen for that to be a reality. And we're gonna share those things with you today. Now, the first thing I want to share with you, and of course, one of my guests is going to delve a little deeper into it, but there's some new regulations regarding international students, which you probably are aware of, and if you're not, then this is information. You need a provincial attestation letter to apply for student study permit as of 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 22, 2024. So most students must include a provincial attestation letter, which is a PAL that it's called from the province or territory where they plan to study with their study permit application. And this is something as new as January 22, 2024. It's important that we you note know this where they plan to study in. So of course, every territory, every province has this particular letter that needs to be issued to students who are planning to study. In most cases, if you apply without a PAL, your application will be returned. And of course, your fees will be returned as well. So that is important to note. You cannot proceed without this. Also, study permits, just some things that you want to know about that. Processing times, about 10 weeks, 
this processing time doesn't include the time you will need for biometrics. And that's important to note. Of course, fees for study permit is Canadian $150 when you do that application. All right, so um, documents that you will need for that study permit, proof of acceptance, provincial attestation letter from your province or territory where you plan to study, which is new as of January 22, 2024, proof of identity, proof of financial support. You will also need to pay the $2,150 deposit. Then we will be able to send you those documents from Berman University that's needed for that study permit application. All right, so I'm gonna turn over now to one of my guests and she is Nicole Bartley and she is the admissions officer for Berman University. And we're very, very excited to have her in this webinar. She is a specialist when it comes to, um, of course, and it's probably the gatekeeper. So any application you send to us, she has to view those, she has to look over and decide if you are a qualified candidate or not. And so she has a very important role. Nicole, welcome to um, the webinar. Thank you, Mario. You're welcome. As, as Mario said, I am the admissions officer. So I'm kind of your first point of contact after you or to get accepted to the university. And so, um, if you've already been accepted, congratulations. If you're still in the process of applying, please do so as soon as possible as um, as time is running out to get everything taken care of before uh, before September. Um, as, as Mario talked about, there is a new requirement, a provincial attestation letter, which you will receive at the same time as getting your letter of acceptance from Berman University. Um, you'll receive uh, acceptances in kind of two stages. The first thing you'll accept is an offer of admission, which after we review your file, if everything looks good, we will say congratulations, we would love to offer you admission. Um, after you've been offered admission, then you need to move on to the financial clearance part portion, which my colleague Angela will review the process in a little bit here, but we've already touched on some of the main points, including the required deposit. Once the financial clearance portion is completed, then we will issue the, both the letter of acceptance as well as the provincial attestation letter coming from the province of Alberta. So you receive both of those at the same time from, from Bourbon University. All right. Thank you so much, Nicole. Appreciate that information. Um, is there anything else you want to share with them that's admissions related? Um, probably the main point, and I and you did touch on this um a bit in your portion, Mario, is that mm -hmm. um the study permit processing time on paper is maybe ten weeks, but it can sometimes be quite a bit longer than that, depending right. on where you're coming from. So we mm -hmm. do recommend um rolling through the study permit application process as soon as you can. Um, mm -hmm. We do require international students to have their financial clearance before June 3rd. So if you are completing financial clearance after that date, you will de be deferred to winter mm -hmm. term. Um, right. But if you're looking for September, even earlier than that would be um, would be preferable and ideal. All right. And so that's a that's a very important information right there. So June 3rd is more like the cutoff time for financial clearance for, for international students, because after that, it's probably going to be too late for you to get everything ready for the September term. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much again, Nicole. Now, there are some other steps that we're looking at as you prepare for your your trip here and your your journey as a student at Berman University. There are a few things that you need to recognize. Um, ensure your, you obtain financial clearance by completing your financial plan with Student Finance Office. Reserve housing, and we have um, three housing options that you can access. That's Lakeview Hall, Maple Hall, and Ruton Hall. Contact your first year academic advisor, and your advisor's placement is based on the program. So depending on the program that you're studying, then you'll be placed with a first year academic advisor. 
I, I just shared the first year advisors with you. Um, if you are in any of these programs and these are the people that you are gonna be contacting and who will be reaching out to you actually to ensure that you are on your way and your classes are ready for you to um, be involved in the academic life of Berman University. So for those students who are studying biology, general science, open, um, open studies, science, um, psychology, wellness, um, certificate in health science, which is part of our nursing program partnership with Kettering College, then you will have as your first year advisor, Bonita Campbell, and she is the first year advisor in the Faculty of Science. So if you need, if you're in that particular department, this is her information, you can capture that really quickly and ensure that you have some dialogue with her once you're on your way with your um, application and processing for um, student um, study permit and all of those things, you're well on your way, then it's time to make those connections and ensure that your classes are well aligned for you here at Brahman University. Now, for those students who are doing behavioral science, general arts, international health and wellness studies, um, international studies, music, open studies, art, um, outdoor leadership, then your first year academic advisor is Trina Huskin, and she is from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. And of course, that's her information. So if you're doing any of those courses, then this is a person who's gonna provide you some direction and guidance as you seek to make your way to Berman University. Also for those who are doing education, then you would be dealing with Julie Grovelet, and she's a first year academic um, advisor for the School of Education. So whether you're doing um, a, a secondary education or um, elementary education, or whether you are doing uh, the after degree in education, then this is a person that you're gonna be talking to and providing you some direction as you make your way here at Berman University. And for those of you who are in business, then your first year academic advisor is Elmira Hodda. And she is the person that's gonna provide you all the information that you need to get you set up with those classes as well. And for those who are doing religious studies, then this is your first year academic advisor, Lisa Ramesh. And of course, um, you, Get the information there, see her contact information, and um, you can always get some information from um, the individuals who are your first year advisors as it relates to the classes. If you have those particular questions and you can reach out to them as well. All right, now other next steps, of course, when you logging credentials are important, receiving an email from Berman University from the IT ticket at bermanuniversity.ca. This will outline how to gain access to your student portal, which is very important. Everything is gonna be operating from your student portal and D2L. Uh, so it's important that you have this access and this email will give you the information how to get gain access to your student portal and D2L, which is Desire to Learn account. Ensure your official transcript is sent to our admissions office. Um, in, in the initial stage, some of you will send a copy of your transcript, which might be can might be used in the early stages to decide how um, your application and your acceptance. But once you are coming to Berman University, you need to provide that official transcript so that we have that documentation on our file. And I'm sure the admissions officer here will agree with me that that's very important. Of course, also you need to book transportation to our campus. So once you get into Canada and get to one of the port, um, whether it's in Calgary or in Edmonton, one of those airports, then you need to book transportation to get you from the airport to our campus. And that's done at www.bermanu.ca 
backslash transportation. And of course, also very important is that orientation week, which we call QQuest on our campus. And that week is very important. It's, it's critical that every new student, especially our international students, become part of the QQuest because you're going to get a good orientation to understand um, life here at Berman University and get you set up so that you can have a successful student life on campus. And so registration for that is at bermanu.ca QQuest, backslash QQuest. So make sure you take those information and get yourself signed up and set up for a successful student life here on our campus. All right, so um, we're gonna look now at financial obligation and clearance. And I am excited as well to have on this webinar, Angela Debert, and she is the Director of Student Financial Services on our campus. So anything that has to do with your finances um, as it relates to being a student at Berman University, this is a person that you're going to be talking with um, and some of the people from her office, but she will provide you some information. So Angela, I'm going to turn over to you as we look at um, the whole matter of uh, financial obligation and clearance. What are some of those things that individuals need to be focused on as it relates to their finance and ensuring that they're ready financially for Berman University? Welcome, Angela. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mario, for having me. Um, yeah, yes. welcome. Hello. And uh, we're excited that have your interest in coming to Berman. So once uh, you have been accepted to Berman and you've mm -hmm. gotten your acceptance letter from Nicole, um, who you heard from earlier, your next step is going to be to get financial clearance. So you will have received a link in your communications on your acceptance um, that says it is your spending plan request um, form that you fill out. So you're going to click on that link and you're going to give us some information. You're going to tell us what your program of study is. You're going to tell us um, where you're wanting to live. You're going to tell us um, if you're going to be needing that transportation that Mario just talked about booking and, and just some of those other things. And with that information, we then work on giving you a very um, specific to your program and to you, a spending plan estimate that will give you an idea of what your fees will look like for the upcoming school year. So we will send you then the some a couple of documents. One will be the spending plan and another is an agreement um, to your email that you provided. And that will be then a form that you just can go over. If you have questions, you can always feel free to call or email us uh, to make sure you understand everything on there because we want you to, to be clear. And then once we get those signed documents back, um, from you, we'll be looking for that down payment of 2,150 Canadian, that is in Canadian dollars. And a part of the information that we'll be sending you is also the link. We do work with a company that takes international payments called Pay My Tuition. So I will be sending you a link that you can go in and you can make your payment. Once we have received that down payment and all your signed documents, I release your financial information back to Nicole uh, Bartley and admissions so that she can then work on the required letters that you are going to be needing to apply for that study permit. So that will kind of be what gets you into the country. Uh, once you are here, um, we always do remind students several times throughout the process that you do as an international student, you will need to pay your term free fees up front um, prior to uh, being able to register for classes. So it's just that down payment that we need for you to get your letters and your documents for that study permit. But you're also going to um, be ready to needing to have those funds needed for the upcoming school year so that you can pay. And once we receive um, that payment and you're on campus, you are able to register. You can certainly talk with beforehand each of the advisors that Mario went through um, and you can map out, you can plan what classes you're wanting to take, but you won't be able to actually register for them until we've received that payment um, in full. 
but our office, you have our contact information. Our office is open all throughout the year. Um, so you can feel free to contact us anytime with questions that you have about that. Of course, one of the big questions that we always get up front is, is there some scholarships available um, for international students? And we do have some scholarships available. Um, and so uh, with that information that I'll be sending you, um, we will send you the link so you can look at, um, we do have an international student scholarship that you are eligible for and can apply for, as well as there'll be um, some scholarships that you can potentially be eligible for for your second third and fourth year study at Berman. So we will send you um, all the those details once you uh, submit your form so that we can send you the financial spending plan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela. Appreciate that uh, mm -hmm. information. And there is a new International Student Scholarship as well. Yeah, the International Student Scholarship. Yeah, the 1500. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's something to note that there is always support here at Burma and we provide, uh, we, we charge you, but then we provide financial support to help you to make it happen. So it's important to note that. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to move on. So there are some other things that you will need to do and to be ready to travel to Canada. So ensure you have the following. One, you need to have your passport. And I'm aware that some people it's at this time that they actually get a passport because sometimes they've never traveled before. So you need a passport to enter Canada. You need to get your student visa. You need to also get confirmation from immig immigration. You need to have your biometrics done, proof of vaccination, copy of your birth certificate, and any other supporting documents. And that's important to note because whatever those supporting documents are that you will be receiving from the university and from um, all the different agencies that you're working with to ensure that you get in then all those documents that are going to prove your point. You need to take them along with you when you're coming, very important. Also, um, study permits will be issued at the port of entry when you arrive. Now you need to have all the relevant doc documentation as I mentioned earlier. Processing time can take from about 30 minutes to a few hours. And so it depends on how many questions you're going to be asked and what whoever, what, what that that interaction looks like. So it can be quick and it can be long. But what you need to note is that sometimes because of how lengthy this process is your connecting flight, you might actually miss your connecting flight. So what you need to do is ensure that you contact your airline information desk in the airport, have some dialogue with them, and they will get you situated on another flight to ensure that you get to the university once that process is complete. All right. And of course, ask questions. If you don't know, it doesn't hurt to ask question and get the information. So if there is anything that you're uncertain about while you are traveling and in that process, ask the relevant people who you are relating to and those who are interacting with you in this process to get you through the port of entry. Ask them the question so that you can be clear as to what you your expectations are. And um, if there's any, um, ambiguity in anything, then you can get some clarity on that. All right. So it's very important for that. Also, what is it that I need to bring or what do I need to get here? There are a few things that you need to focus on. So bring your clothes, of course. Special care products, if you are on any medication, ensure that you have at least a month or two months supply when you're coming, um, you know, it's important. You will have to apply for Alberta Health when you get here, but those things take time. So you want to make sure that you bring your medication with you, um, toiletries, um, things that remind you of home. So any little photo frames or pictures, and you can always get the photo frames here, but take your pictures and little things that just remind you of your homeland, um, maybe souvenirs or, you know, your country apparel, national apparel and those things, because sometimes we do have cultural days here and cultural celebrations and, um, you know, cultural sabbats. So, of course, 
it's always good to take those things because you're not going to find most of those things here in Canada. Um, things that you can get here, of course, winter jackets. Um, Canada is is uh, a snow country, <laughs> so you will have snow, you will have winter, and of course, you need to take ensure that you you can get those winter jackets here, and of, and more than likely, it's gonna be a, a better cost than if you try to get them there. And in some some countries outside of North America where it's sunny all the time, you're probably not even going to be able to get a winter jacket there. So you buy them here. Um, get your winter boots here. Your books for school, important. You can get those here. Um, important to note that there are students who would have done the class before you and a number of students sell their books at the end of using them the previous semester. So you can actually get the books pretty cheaper um, once you get here. So it's important to know that as well. Room items, things that you're gonna need for your room, like curtains and uh, what whatever you need to fix your room up. Um, you need like hangers and those things. You're not gonna walk, bring hangers in your suitcase because you can only carry so much. So those are things that you will get when you're here. Um, the rooms are allowed a small fridge. So if you need a fridge, um, you can buy that when you get here as well. And again, there are students who would have had before who might be graduating. So some of those students are actually selling. And sometimes those are available from the dorm as well. So you can access those um, from getting them here. Microwave is also an option for you if you need a microwave in your room. And those are the only things that are allowed in the room. So you can get a microwave as well. Now, expectations in Canada, let's look at that. Um, 18 or older is considered age of majority in Canada. You're an adult at that age. So it's important to note that you, a lot of things that will happen, you will be responsible for yourself as it relates, because you're seen as an adult. It's very important. So once you get here, you're gonna make sure you operate within the confines of the Canadian law so that you, you will be in good standing. Also, Alberta, Canada might be colder than you anticipate. It gets cold sometimes. There are uh, 40 degrees, uh, minus 40 degrees weather and for 30 degrees weather from time to time. But of course, so you need to be aware of that. Understand that this is a cold place. And once you prepare yourself, get proper winter clothing and that kind of thing, you shall be fine. We are here and we love it. There are no public transportation system in Lacombe. So, however, there is a private taxi service and shuttle service provided by the university. And this is important to note. So if you need to get into the town and get around, you there are taxi, private taxi services that are available. And there are times when the university provides shuttle services for students to go into town and get things that they need to purchase in Lacombe area. So there is a provision that's been made for you as students on our campus. You will need to sign up for an account with a Canadian financial institution. Uh, so there are different banking options, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. You'll also need to register for an Alberta Health Service card. Uh, for you to do any kind of access, any kind of health services, whether walk-in clinics or the hospital, you need an Alberta Health Service card to be able to do that, make that access. Once you have that, you're good to go. And that application you will do, it takes about six weeks, I believe, to get that back. So you will need to do that once you arrive. And of course, during QQuest, all of those things are dealt with when you get to that orientation week on our campus, which is why it's important that you are here for that orientation week because all of these things that you will need to get you situated as a student at Perman University will be happening at that time. Also, worship service may vary from what you are accustomed to in your homeland. So what we're saying to you, just be open um, to an appreciation of different forms and styles of worship and you will come with an open mind so that you are not um, blown away if it doesn't look like what you're accustomed to. So come with that understanding that 
And you might come and it's exactly what you're used to, and that's fine. But if it's not, then come with an understanding that things might be a little different, okay? Also, the banking options that we talk about, CIBC is one of those options that we have in the call. You have Ro Royal Bank of Canada, which is RBC, um, Scotiabank, TD Bank. Most international students like CIBC because when you have an account with them, there are no charges for students. And that's important to note. Also, which I'm gonna talk about next is money transfer options. CIBC also offer free money transfer. So once you are sending money or you can actually, once it's done via, via um, banking account. So if you do a bank account transfer from here to somewhere else, it's free with CIBC. And it's something that I've used. So I know that for a fact. Also, Western Union is, is also located within our community, Lacombe community. So if your folks need to send you money once you get here to pay those bills, then we have a Western Union that is located in our area. Sometimes because of the amount of funds that you're collecting, they might not have all that readily available. We do have in neighboring communities in Red Deer where you can access more funds in the town area. So those are options that you will have to ensure that things flow nicely with you when you're here as a student at Burman University. We're gonna be opening up for question and answer. So I'm sure if you have any questions, we are here, the, the experts are here. We have Angela and um, we also have Nicole and myself, we're here to answer your questions. So feel free to ask any questions that you wish. All right. All right, so Nicole. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to thank you so much for your time. As I realize we <laughs> we're 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 just left by ourselves. So thank you for your time. And Angela, thank you as well. My pleasure. All right. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to drop in there. Um, it's being recorded, so we will have it up on our website so that students can access it at another time. I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're good. Um, okay, so we, we would have covered most things there. Eh? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Um, you have an awesome day. And you too. Thank you. All right. For those of you students who are watching this, thank you for sharing with us. Um, you have a great day today and looking forward to seeing you on our campus very soon, right? So thank you for your time. See you on our campus soon. Have a great day. All right, you take care. Bye-bye.